I am the whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for The Whistler, rated by Independent Research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. The Whistler's strange story. It was midday in the tiny Mexican village of Riondo. The air was still quiet, and the streets a glaze of white hot dust. As the bus creaked to a halt at the far end of the single main street, a lone passenger stepped down, stood for a moment looking around him. Moving away from the bus and along the street, it all came back to him. The neglected fountain marking the plaza. The faded facades along the little row of shops. The old cafe. All the same, unchanged. Just as when he had left on that same bus almost a year ago. At that time, Roy Collins was certain that he would never have reason to return. But now he did have a reason for returning. A good reason. Crossing the plaza, the guitar music he heard reminded him again of his former mining partner. Old Dan Bosley and Paul. Yes, Paul Fallon was the youngest and the laziest. Interested only in learning to play that second-hand guitar he'd picked up somewhere. But now it was Lola Mendes Roy wanted to see. The girl who ran the tiny cafe. Lola! Lola! It's Roy! Roy Collins! Roy? <laughs> Senor Roy? Oh, but no, no... Oh, it is you, it is. Oh, Senor Roy. Oh, there, there, Lola. Of course it's me. Come on. Oh, oh Senor Roy. Hey, Senor Roy. Take it easy. They got really stay away, Lola, from you. Oh, no, no, I did not. I, I did not know what to think, Senor Roy. It's just, well, it's just that I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> well, it's more I like it. <laughs> you look tired. Tired? Oh, yeah, tired, hot, and I... Hey, Lola, I hope the cafe hasn't changed. Have you still got some of that good... Tequila. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, yes. Sit down, Senor Roy. All right. No, no, no. Over here by the barn. Oh, I'm so happy, Senor Roy. So happy that you're well and back again. Back in Riondo. Yeah, me too, Lola. Oh, it's good to sit down without bouncing around on that rickety old bus. No, never mind that now. Here, drink this. Yeah. To your return. Ah. <clears throat> oh. Senor Roy. <laughs> Senor Roy, are you back to stay? Or maybe just to see your old friend Dan Bosling? Hmm? Oh, I don't know. I might look him up, maybe. I really came back to see you, Lola. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, how is Dan? Is he making out okay? Oh, see, si. He bought the watch. The silver one. I told you that in the letter I wrote. You asked me to let you know when he bought it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so Dan got his silver watch, huh? Always said he would, didn't he? <clears throat> when he struck it rich. Yes. Is he still up in the hills in our old camp? I think so. Oh, see. Oh, Manuel. Manuel, look, it is in your eye. He's come back to us. Oh, yeah, yeah. The long arm of the law. <laughs> Hello, Manuel. Senor. Senor Collins. Oh, sit down, Manuel. Have a drink with us. No, thank you, Lola. What's the matter, Manuel? <laughs> Southwest Mountie always on duty? Always, senor. 24 hours of the day, I am on duty. Oh, that's fine, oh. fine. <laughs> that still amuses you, senor? Oh, sorry, Manuel. It's just that in this sleepy little joint... Nothing that... ever happens. I remember you always used to say that. Did I? Always. But you forget, senor, that Riondo is just one place, one village. Oh, Manuel has been promoted, senor Roy. He patrols all this territory now. Travels over part of it each day. Well, congratulations, Manny boy. Why did you come back, senor? Why didn't you keep going like you promised? Oh, now, wait a minute. Oh, please, I, I... Manuel, just because he and his partners had a little fight. I'm sorry, Lola. 
But it is my job to ask such questions of strangers. Strangers? <laughs> I'm hardly that, Manuel. I spent quite a few months here. Weak, senor. You did not stay long enough to know Rianto, but long enough for us to know you. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Neither would I. I, I will see you later, Lola. I have some reports to make up. But, Manuel! <laughs> committee was actually as you expected. Lola pleased and joyous at your return. Manuel Rosales, annoyed, suspicious, certain that your return threatened his obvious romantic inclinations toward Lola. With a promise to return later, you leave her and walking through the village, your thoughts turn back to your old partner, Dan Bosley. And then the sound of the guitar startles you again, doesn't it, Roy? But only for a moment. You're sure Paul Fallon, your other ex-partner, is far from Riondo at this moment. You're sure that he hasn't the knowledge you have of Dan's recent good fortune. At a blacksmith shop at the end of the street, you stop, rouse the dozing old man, and present your proposition. He doesn't take to it too well, does he? Ah, si, si, senor. I have boros, good, strong, fat animals. But I do not rent them without the pay in advance. Now, look, look, Juan, I said you'd get your money. It's... It's just that I haven't got it right now. I have to work a deal with a friend of mine. No, no, senor. No pay, no borrow. I'm very sorry, senor. Now, listen, you dried up old goat. Why bother with him, Roy? What? I have enough for our journey. Oh. Uh-huh. One of your old partners. Welcome back to Riondo, Roy. And if I may be so bold, may I ask, did you come to see an old pal? Or did you come for gold? Shut up and put that thing down. <laughs> okay, okay. But if I can't sing, we'll talk. There's nothing to talk about. What are you doing here, anyway? Ah, huh? you see, there is something to talk about. How you hate Riondo, but you're back. Now, there's got to be a reason. A good reason. Like what? Well, like maybe our dear old ex-partner, Dan Bosley, making a strike. Did he? I wouldn't know. <laughs> Neither would I. But we'll go see him, won't we, Roy? Sort of renew our old partnership, just like you figured. I didn't figure any of this thought. No, not with me along, you didn't. But you'll lead me to him. Will I? You might as well get this straight, Roy. You're not going anywhere without me, partner. Oh, yes, we're right back in Riondo. Two of the unholy three. We're going to take Dan's gold away. Half for you and half for me. Your planning, your careful trip down here. Your certainty that Paul knew nothing of Dan Bosley's good luck in the hills far back of Riondo. But it's all right now again, isn't it? Yes. You had to move fast and run the risk of Lola suspecting your plan, wondering if you'd really come back to see her after all. But you're almost in the clear, and she doesn't seem to suspect a thing. She's even helped you, is still helping you. Here in the darkness in back of the old cafe. Lola, you're okay. I'm not forgetting me. Oh, I hope you will be safe, Senor Roy. And that you will come back soon. Oh, yeah, yeah, I will, Lola, real soon. Now, look, are you sure your uncle will miss the borrow the supplies? Oh, no, no, he will not. The supplies I bought. I'll have the borrow back to him in a week. And after that, Lola, I'll make it up to you. We'll get out of this burg. Oh, be careful, Senor Roy. The mountain trails, the rivers, they're dangerous. Manuel says... Never mind what that half-baked deputy says. You heard what I said, didn't you? You and me, Lola. Oh, si, Senor Roy. You and me. Adios, querido. On the trail, alone, with your movements covered by the night, 
And Lola's assurance that she'll say nothing to anyone. You're confident again, aren't you, Roy? Pleased that you've outmaneuvered Paul. Of the three of you, Paul knew the least about the territory around the old camp. He never went there alone, so he'll be unable to find the hidden canyon. You have trouble remembering yourself, don't you, Roy? But you remember enough to follow the river exactly as Dan always did. It's almost dawn before you decide to rest. You halt the burrow, sink down wearily near a tree on the riverbank. You feel yourself starting to doze off, and then... You leap to your feet, stare around the half-darkness of the near dawn, wonder if you're imagining things. But you're not, are you, Roy? You're not imagining anything at all. Oh, my partner, he does not like me. He slipped out of town and fled. But I found him now by this old tree. And I'll stick with him till I'm dead. Okay, Roy. Let's go see Dan, huh? You've lost, haven't you, Roy? At least for the present. Paul's tricked you. Followed you from Riondo and whatever you find at the end of the trail at Dan's little cabin in Hidden Canyon. You must share with him, unless... I found him now by this old tree And I'll stick with him till I'm dead Yes, Roy. There might be something in Paul's ridiculous song. A way out for you. Something not quite as ridiculous as it sounds. You've been thinking about it all day, and you're still thinking about it as the two of you make camp that night on a rocky cliff over the river which winds through the twisting canyon below. Then as you stand there, looking down on the river, a ribbon of silver gleaming in the bright moonlight. Hey, Roy. Look down there along the river. Isn't that smoke? Yes. Yeah. Dan's place. Well, that's not very far. Why'd we stop here? A lot farther than it look. I see. <laughs> Seems to me we could have come along the river all the way instead of hiking up over this mountain. I thought you might enjoy the view. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it's an inspiring sight. Sure. Sure it is. It's quite a drop from here, isn't it? Down there to the river. Yeah. Quite a drop. The following morning finds you alone on the trail again, leading down the mountainside. And it's almost noon when you reach the river's edge. You stop for a moment, look up to the lone tree high above at the top of the cliff where you were camped last night. Yes, it's a long drop, isn't it, Roy? Paul Fallon couldn't possibly have survived a fall like that. Then as you turn and start up the river, you freeze in your tracks as the bullet kicks up a tiny cloud of dust at the top of a nearby boulder. And then a smile crosses your face and you relax. Yet you don't make a move. You wait. And presently he appears, walking easily along the path, coming toward you. Hello, Dan. Roy? Yeah. Roy Collins, your old partner. Hiya, Dan. Didn't recognize you. Still pretty quick with a trigger finger, huh? But then you always were, uh, cautious. I don't like strangers nosing around. Yeah, I know. So you're back, huh? Well, I'm pushing through, Dan, into the interior. Figured as long as I was in the neighborhood, I'd drop in and say hello. I see. Just passing through, huh? Yeah. Hey, look, you don't mind if I stay over a day or so, do you, Dan? I, uh, I can stand the rest. No, I guess I don't mind. Come on, shack's down this way. Build me a new place after you. All nice split up. You walk away casually. Then when you're a few hundred feet down the path, you look back. Dan hasn't moved. Now's your chance, Roy. At the base of the cliffs, you stare at the crude setup for washing gold dust out of the river sand. Then your eyes wander up the smooth face of the cliff to the top. The lone tree directly overhead. Paul must have fallen close by, but there's no sign of his body. You whirl at the sound. It's only a loose boulder, Roy. 
And then suddenly a thought hit you. Is it possible that Paul is still alive? That he wasn't killed in the fall? Is he somewhere close by at this moment? Watching you? Uh, what? Oh. Oh, Dan. Out for a walk, Roy? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I thought I'd come down here, take a look at your layout. Too bad it isn't paying off. Yeah, too bad. Uh, look, Roy, I'm going down river. Check some traps, I said. Want to come along? Well, I guess I'd better not, Dan. I, I, I think I'll stay around here and catch up on my sleep. I'll, I'll be leaving in the morning, probably. Oh, I, I see. Well, all right, Roy. I'll be back by dinner time. Okay, Dad. It's a break, isn't it, Roy? With Dan out of the way, if only for a few hours, you'll have time to search his shack. Look for the gold you're certain is there. You watch Dan as he disappears around the bend, and then you race back to the camp and begin your search. After an hour or two, you finally find what you're looking for, hidden away under the loose floorboards of the shack. Yes, Dan's gold. Sack after sack. A small fortune, Roy. Now you'll have to act quickly. Pack as much gold as you can on your burrows and get out before Dan returns. As you reach down to pull up the first sack of gold, your hand freezes in midair. You're certain you heard something outside, the snap of a twig, perhaps. You remain motionless, unable to move, hardly daring to breathe. Finally, you slip across the window and look out. There's no one in sight. Your hand is trembling as you return to the gold cache. Begin piling the gold sacks on the table and then... Hello, Rob. Dad. Found what you've been looking for. Now, wait a minute, please. Dad. Take it easy with that, that trigger finger, huh? Didn't expect me back so soon. Now, wait a minute. Look. Look, Dad, I, I know you don't think that I... I didn't go far, Roy. I had to find out what you were up to. Let you show your hand. And you did. Now, listen. Dad, I, I, I was just looking around. You got me all wrong. Sure. All right! As Dan staggers back from the blow, you kick the gun from his hand and clatter to the floor. You pick it up quickly, and you're ready for him as he lunges at you. Dan sinks slowly to one knee and then crumples to the floor. You really shouldn't have come back, Dan, not so soon. You... You won't get... away, Roy. No? Look. Look outside... The burrow. I let him go. I was gonna make you walk back to Rianna. Okay, Dad. I'll walk back. And I'll make it, partner. Even with all that gold, I'll be carrying your gold. No. No, you'll never get there. You don't know your way well enough. I'll find my way, Dad. I got in here, I'll follow the river back out. Long way around, but easier with a load. The, the river? No. No, you'll never. Make it. This way you're wrong, pal. I'll make it all right. You're the one who isn't going to make it. They'll find me. So what happened? Not right away. They won't find you. You know, Dan, when you dug that place under the floor to hide your gold, you were digging something else. Your own grave. <laughs> figured out, haven't you? With Dan's body rolled under the floor of a shack and the loose boards back in place over it. You have only to pack all the gold you can carry into knapsacks, wrap them onto your back, and then hurry to the river. At its edge, you stop a moment near the digging, wondering for a fleeting moment about Paul's body, what became of it. And then you have another idea. You can cover your tracks, can't you, Roy? So that if anyone else happened along, they won't know what direction you took. You wade along the river's edge, ankle deep. Move along for several yards in the cold water. And then a sudden clutching fear grips you as your feet seem to give way and you begin to sink. Now you know what happened to Paul's body. It fell into quicksand, Roy. And you've walked into the same quicksand. You don't know your way in these parts. The river. No, you'll never make it. Never make it. 
frantically, you claw at the pack strapped to your shoulder. It's Dan Bosley's gold weighing you down, forcing you to think deeper and deeper. Yes, Dan's gold. The gold you killed for, hurrying you to your own death. Desperately, you reach out, manage to grab the branch of a tree. But all you can do is hold on and try to keep from thinking deeper. Help! Help! Help me! Help! Help! Help me! Your own voice, Roy, bouncing against the hills and back. And then the memory of another voice seems to fill the air around. I found him now by this old tree. And I'll stick with him till I'm... Suddenly, the bushes on the river's edge part, and someone appears there. Hello, senor. Uh, who is it? Manuel! Manuel, help me! Give me your hand, I... Hello, senor. You are tiring fast. You cannot hold on too long. Huh? My position is a strange one, senor. If I leave you there, you would never bother Lola again. Manuel! You can't! You can't leave me like this! Manuel! Where are you going? Come back! It's all right, senor. I will be back. Hey, no! Don't leave! Those tree branches! Throw some of them out of here! Something that'll give me some black! Oh, no, senor. Believe me. I've had to do this before. I will help you the same. What are you, what are you going to do? I know this quick. We need something long and flat. Something you can hold on to while I pull you out. All right. Anything. But hurry, by the way. See, senor, I will hurry. I will tear up the floorboards in Dan's shack. Floorboards? No, not the floorboards. See, senor, they are the only supports I can get here. I am sure that under the circumstances, your old partner Dan Bosley will not mind my pulling them up. 